Hey, hey CDA and welcome back to Satisfactory. Last time around we built this pretty awesome looking power facility I think. It's not the biggest one in the world but it's efficient, it's easy to build which is very important and it provides us all the power that we need. Now in the meanwhile I have a problem because currently update 7, the experimental branch of this is actually bugged. So if I get anywhere close to my trucks they are not driving. However if I stay far enough away the game actually doesn't load in the actual vehicles but does simulate how they would be driving if they were actually in the game. So as you can see the vehicles are actually driving around as long as I'm not too close to my base. So given the fact that I'm going to have to stay away for a while I figured why not take advantage of that and make ourselves some very nice basic blueprints that we can use all over the place. Now if you're not on update 7 that means that this um, will only serve as inspiration for your own builds or as a future reference in case you do transfer to update 7 at some point but I do think it's kind of nice to see kind of the blueprint designer uh, in, uh, in practice how it works how you would design some basic stuff there is of course already people out there making complete malls hubs factories etc with a tile for tile puzzle piece type of approach uh, a type of, of blueprints um, I'm definitely not going to do that for the simple reason that takes a lot of time I have a job so we'll have to keep it short, short and sweet but I also want to keep it practical because I want to make designs that you could easily make yourself as well or make your own variants of those designs based on your own preferences and own playstyle so let's get to it now first of all you're going to want to make a couple of things that might not be the most original but are going to save you a massive amount of time and that is for example this array over here with a total of 8 smelters which is going to be extremely useful for several reasons. First of all 8 smelters is the exact amount that you can feed through a Mark III belt. It's also designed in such a way that it's very compact. It's designed in such a way that it's actually stackable, which is really nice if you want to make kind of like smelting towers or something like that. And it's also just a really fun way to build it because, because it's so compact and with the um, output belt going on top of the input belt, it's just very convenient to make um, very closely built arrays of basic items. So, um, you can of course make variants on this as well with different types of outputs, maybe just a single line with outputs, things like that. But I think that's probably better saved for things like this. Simple constructor builds like this are going to save you a lot of time as well for several reasons. One, there's actual already power included. I know you're probably getting tired of me saying this, but I hate doing all those power poles and power lines. And this comes with power attached, so you only need to connect maybe one or two power poles in order to actually make this all work. Of course, there's also an input belt and an output belt. It has all the little tiny belts that you need to put in between the splitters and the mergers. And generally speaking, this is just very functional. Now you could make a version of this for every single item you can make in the constructor. I don't recommend doing that, but if you want to be um, like very consistent about that and not have to fiddle at all with your builds, then that's something you could do. I just prefer making this once and then just setting the recipe as needed. Now, of course, if you're going to make a single line build like this, you're also going to want to make this. Now, if you're wondering what the difference between this build and the last build is, it's actually only the direction of the in and output belts. The reason that you might want to do this is that if you want to make a symmetric layout with different constructors making different items, um, and you want to place them in such a way that they're kind of not all facing in the same direction, you're going to need a completely mirrored build. So just flipping the blueprint around doesn't work because then the belts will be moving in opposite directions from each other. So just having the mirrored build on hand is going to be very useful. Now, once you get to the larger machines, you might want to go for slightly more complex and smooth layouts. And what I mean by that is that it's a very popular approach to kind of hide your belts under the floor. And if you do that, you're going to spend a lot of time with floor holes, lifts, um, connecting all of that back up again on the, uh, the downside of the floor. Um, so generally speaking, if you again, if you want to just save yourself a lot of time, this is where blueprints come in very handy because once again, you can kind of just copy paste this layout. Now you could make different versions of this. I now have a version with three different assemblers. That's probably a little bit much. It might be smarter to just make a layout with just one or 
<laughs> variant or two of those where you have like one with one, one with two, one with three, because of course it really depends on how many of these buildings that you need, but the, the layout will be the same. And the idea behind this is basically that you have all the belts hidden beneath the floor, make sure you connect them up already, and make sure you connect them with um, lifts, which I apparently I forgot over here because I'm currently having some issues with these lifts actually turning up correctly once you connect them. So I'm going to go put back in those lifts, but also make sure you kind of test your blueprints after you make them, because even if they are correct in the blueprint designer right now, if you're on the experimental world, uh, your blueprints are apparently able to break because I've had that problem several times now. And just in case you were wondering what it looks like with the lifts, we have a line of inputs over here that goes into a lift up here. And then we have the other lifts facing in the other direction, feeding off a belt that goes into this one. And then that kind of like alternates, as you can see in between. It's uh, a little hard to get around below here with all these lifts getting in the way, but you can still actually get around quite easily as long as you are not going through a belt which is again why usually it takes quite a long time to set this up. Uh, I also recommend that if you use a belt like this and every now and then you need uh, belts to cross each other well you can either just have them clip straight through each other because they're below floor no one is ever going to be able to see that but if you want to be um, more strict about that and actually not kind of go against the laws of nature, physics etc uh, it's very easy to bring the belts up uh, through a lift and just have them go on top of the floor for just a few meters and then go back down just so you can have something else cross below in the meanwhile. Now just to keep in mind once again that with builds like this because it's a single line you might also want to consider making a mirrored version of that just in case you want to make something symmetric. Although I do have to say it's probably less urgent that you do it with assemblers, manufacturers etc for the simple reason that you're typically using a lot less of those and uh, the chances that you're going to make a symmetric build with those is probably a lot lower than when it comes to things like constructors. Now there is of course nothing stopping you from making similar builds for constructors as well, uh, so by all means if you do like this type of layout make them for all the types of units that you might want to include in your factory. Do uh, make sure that you don't include too many foundations because it makes it a lot more annoying to actually place them down. Make sure you have them all at the same height because of course otherwise it's going to mismatch between different um, parts of your blueprints. And generally speaking you can of course make them smaller than I just did over here. You can make a, a constructor type of build like this two founda foundations wide. However, I do like some uh, walkways in between my facilities, which you can manually make as well. I just, just figured, well, hey, why not just have them be included in the build already so that I can remember to leave myself some space to move around. Now, if you want to get really elaborate with your blueprints, you can also make builds like this. This is, in fact, the exact same um, smelter build that I just showed you at the beginning of this episode. So it has the eight smelters in total and a Mark III belt going in between, but it's all hooked up in such a way that it's kind of like it's its own little building already, just, just a, a copy-paste building that I can place anywhere in the world and just go and smelt stuff. Um, so there is one belt going in over here, there's a power node on the outside, which if I connect this up, the entire facility will already be powered. And then I kind of like this, this how this looks, so you will actually see some ore moving in the back here as well. And then on the other side there's a lift that just drops everything back out. Now of course you can make a ton of variations on this as well. I actually did do a, a little bit sneaky thing that you might not think of when you make this build initially. But remember that I do make my builds in such a way that there's not actually a recipe included just yet. So I left the... Um, the, the roof open a little bit so it's very easy to just jump in there and set the recipe get out again and then just close up the roof uh, since i'm going to go in anyway i figured why not just leave open the roof until we actually do that now of course you're not limited to just making um factory parts from your blueprints you can also use it to Basically proclaim you're a big fan of the X-Men or if you want a very imposing type of entrance to your building. I really like like the looks of this, this type of entrance. Um, and of course like variants on this you can easily make in the blueprint designer as well. So you can 
um, basically start out your build facility building a lot quicker because setting up things like this with these crosses and all these these triangle formations etc takes a lot of time and once again if you're going to repeat the pattern over and over or at least use it multiple times it just make it the first time in the blueprint designer and then you can use it in different places in your facility so that's very convenient and i think a very good use case of the blueprint designer now if you're going to use the blueprint designer to make wall sections it's very important that you think about how they're going to interconnect so for example over here i have a bit of a basic wall but it looks more interesting than the average wall just because it has these diagonal beams so if i want to repeat that pattern and um, i think it's this one actually there we go uh, in order to actually make sure we don't have sections of walls sticking together we need to make sure we leave out the uh, the pillar on one of the sides so we can interconnect it with this one and then for example if i want to have it go around the corner i can do it like this and that just makes sure we can have the pattern repeating over and over without having to spend too much time fiddling around with that. Now the problem with this is that it's it's a little bit weird looking when you have a diagonal build like this and the um, bars go in the same direction all the time. So what you can actually do is make a second blueprint but using the other wall and then do it something like this. Apparently I am now out of concrete but I think you get the point now we actually have the diagonal bars running in the opposite direction and we can kind of make a waveform across our base if that's what we want to do so just think about the type of pattern that you want how you want it to repeat or not to repeat in this case and make sure you make your blueprints accordingly now last but not least there's two things that i noticed while using the blueprint designer first of all it seems to kind of eat your resources somehow. Supposedly, when you clear a blueprint, it puts the resources in the blueprint designer storage, which is this, this tiny little box over here. But it doesn't always seem to do that. Uh, I definitely had like five or six stacks of concrete on me when I started doing all of this. I switched a couple of times between blueprints and i i lost a lot of resources while doing that so i'm not entirely sure what's going on there it's also not necessarily a problem or anything like that uh, but if you're going to make blueprints that use very like um, important resources or expensive resources you might just want to save make the blueprint and then reload because your blueprint will still be there uh, but your resources will not be at risk of being lost and the final thing that I noticed was that the trucks or tractors, as they are technically called, are actually moving once again. Even when I am close up and personal, they're no longer dancing around in their places, which was kind of cute to look at, but not very functional. So it seems the problem has been fixed very quickly by the developers as usual. And that means that we can continue building without any problem. I do believe that they managed to break the trains instead which is causing a lot of trouble for a lot of other people. But we don't have trains yet, so good for us that we're not that far ahead. If you're still here, first of all, you are awesome. Second of all, let me know in the comments, are you actually on the experimental build or not? If not, why not? Uh, and if you are, let me know, are you actually using blueprints already? How are you using them? Did I miss out on any obvious use cases that I should cover somewhat, sometime else? Uh, in general, just let me know what you think and how you play. Because of course that is very useful information for me to know for future episodes as well. I hope you enjoyed this specific episode and got some inspiration on how to use the blueprint designer. And make sure you join me in the next few episodes while we're going to be expanding our base significantly to get those heavy modular frames as well as computers up and running.